Hello plant lovers, Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel and thank you for joining me if you are interested in growing, oops sorry about that leaf, cold, cool, intermediate orchids without any extra help such as greenhouses or grow lights or whatever then do hit subscribe because that is really all I grow and so my amateur adventures might be of some use to you. And yes plant lovers, ta-da, it's Cymbidium time. Now, where to start with Cymbidiums? I guess for many people, a bit like Phalaenopsis, it is sort of a gateway orchid because you often are given cut Cymbidium flowers from florists because the flowers do last an amazingly long time when they have been cut from the stem. And particularly in Australia, they're extremely common as a houseplant. So perhaps in my neck of the woods, Cymbidiums along with Phalaenopsis are perhaps the most common orchids people are likely to have in their home or be given to them. And like many orchids, once you know the secrets, it's really simple. In fact, there's no great secret. Cymbidiums are not difficult in my climate. So let's do a little deep dive and, and then reveal perhaps some disappointments. It will end happily though, I promise. The Cymbidiums we're most likely to come across are hybrids and they're generally hybridized to produce amazing flowers, color variants, flower size, some fragrance. So there's a huge variety out there and the range of, um, of Cymbidiums in the wild, I mean, it's largely Himalayan, but it does also include some tropical varieties. So there are Cymbidiums that do grow more tropical climates, but generally the Cymbidiums we're talking about are ones that kind of like moderate conditions. So they're ideal for lots of part of the world and as a houseplant. Let's get to some basics. So firstly, again, there are lots of different cymbidiums, but let's talk generically about these types that you're going to find. They are a mixture of both epiphytic and terrestrial. It really depends on their species orientage, but either way, pot them in a loosish orchid mix. Now, you're going to be mortified when I tell you this, but I always pot my cymbidiums in a generic orchid mix out of the bag from a garden center because it's just a little bit, um, there's kind of more, what am I saying? There's like more grit in it, more soil almost. It's not soily, but it's, um, it's just a bit denser, I suppose, than just bark. But really, whatever works for you. And in Australia, particularly in Melbourne, you see these outdoors a lot, and you actually see people who've planted them in gardens. So heaven knows what they're managing to grow in there, but nonetheless, they're quite tough and love our conditions here. And our conditions are, that the best way to grow these is under dappled light, which means often under a tree is a great place to grow them if you don't get sub-zero temperatures and frost. But cymbidiums are definitely a cold to cool grower. So here in Melbourne, we don't get temperatures that really drop below freezing, about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And our summers can be quite hot, but the cymbidiums are in a dappled spot and they cope reasonably well. It gets a little bit more protection in summer because the trees are deciduous and it gets a little bit more light in winter, but it's not rained on. And like many orchids, that's the key. Cymbidiums don't want to be soggy. And I've actually just watered this, which is why there is still water on the leaves, but you don't want to keep them soggy, but you don't want them to dry out. So, you know, it's that moderate balance and that's the conditions they like, kind of moderate conditions, moderate cool, moderate heat, moderate water. But the cooler winter weather, like many orchids, does trigger the blooms. There are some types that bloom in autumn and some that bloom in spring, which this technically is because it's actually midwinter, but most cymbidiums in Australia, well in Melbourne anyway, are at this stage of their blooming at the moment. So the cold does really trigger, that change in temperature does trigger the production of their flower spikes. Everyone knows what a cymbidium looks like, but cymbidium actually means in Greek, little boat. So apparently, whoever discovered this in the very, very late 18th century felt that it looked like a boat, hence the name. Chinese gardeners have been growing and hybridizing cymbidiums for millennia. So it is a very, very old and established orchid in cultivation. So practicality then, let's have a look. Now, like a lot of orchids, it's new growth. So again, you've got to focus on vegetative growth. Um, now, generally, each pseudobulb is going to produce one or two new shoots. Sometimes more, perhaps. I don't know. I've only ever seen one or two. 
So that's what you've got to encourage. And you do that in the normal way, which means fertilizing, watering, light, making sure that its ambient conditions are fine. And with cymbidiums, I fertilize them in spring, again, with a general slow release fertilizer pellet, which I also mix into the medium when I repot them. And in spring, I'll just put a little bit on the top of the medium, not near any visible roots, because you don't want to fry the poor thing. It's like giving it a, an intravenous injection of McDonald's or something. It'll just freak out. So just be careful where you put topical fertilizer, uh, but that's what I do every spring. And then when I remember, and because these are outside in a specific spot, it's not often, I do give it a diluted solution of a seaweed-based fertilizer during the warmer season. And I always dilute that to about one eighth of the recommended dose. So we've covered light, dappled, we have covered water, moderate, constant, not wet, but don't let it dry out. We've covered the medium, which is loose and typical for epiphytic orchids, but I'm a bit of a cheapskate and use generic out of the bag mix. And we've covered fertilizer. So the other thing perhaps then is its growth habit. And this is actually a great example. So I bought this as a seedling. Now what you can see here, and I'll come in and show you, that was the original growth point there. And then that produced the two pseudobulbs either side. And then each of those pseudobulbs has produced another pseudobulb. And in fact, what you can see, and I'll come in and show you, is that this pseudobulb has already started to produce its new one there. And this one, hopefully, is gonna be doing the same thing because, plant lovers, it is those new pseudobulbs that produce the flowers. So as we can see, fairly clear timeline, this seedling, one, two, three, is three years old, and I have had it for three years, and this is the first year that it's bloomed. So that, I think, is pretty typical of a time frame from seedling to flowering, three years with cymbidiums, you know, asterisk, there are variations, obviously, depending upon your area and the type of orchid that you've got. But that's what happened with this. So I bought it as a seedling, and three years later, here we are. I've got a spike per pseudobulb, and I'm very happy with that. And what I will come in and show you is that the flower spike emerges at the base of the pseudobulb in between the leaf casing and the bulb itself. So it comes out of that gap in the middle, very much like where an oncidium flower spike will come from. And in fact, where many orchid flower spikes come from, that sort of juncture between the external leaf and the pseudobulb. And I think once a pseudobulb has bloomed, it will not bloom again, but you don't want to remove them because they are full of energy and they support the new plant as it grows. Now, with this little pseudobulb here, it is gonna go through its growth period basically for a year. And by this time next year, it will be this size and it will be mature enough to bloom. So that's the cycle you go for. Basically, you get your new growths in, well, we're in midwinter now. So, you know, midwinter, late winter, early spring. You want those growths to mature over the next period of time and then come next autumn, they are ready to start producing their flower spikes. So that's what you've got to try and achieve, the maturity of your new growths annually. Not dissimilar to many other orchids. But now, plant lovers, to the disappointment. I haven't revealed the name of this orchid and this cymbidium is called Pure Sarah Snowball. Bit of a silly name. I did actually lose the tag, which complicated matters. I No, actually, I didn't lose it. It was in the pot, and then a possum knocked the pot over, and I don't know, ate the tag or dragged it away. But anyway, that's what it is. So now to the disappointment. I, when I saw images of this, I actually thought it was really quite yellow, and I was looking for a yellow orchid. And as you can see, it's got hints of yellow. It's like sort of dirty ivory, I think, but it's um, more cream than yellow, and dare I say, plant lovers, a little bland. Which means, you know, one must be ruthless. How much space do we have? Does that mean, pure Sarah Snowball, I am gonna keep you forever? Oh, I'm very attached now that it's bloomed and as it gets a bigger specimen and we have more flower spikes, it will look amazing in bloom. And this is a dwarf type of cymbidium, so it's not going to be one of those massive strappy specimens, but much smaller with very pendulous flower spikes. Oh, I don't know, I'm a softie, maybe I'll keep you after all. But I'm wondering, you know, have you ever had that moment when you've ordered an orchid and you've nurtured it for three years in this case to get it to a flowering point, the flowers emerge and you think, eh. <laughs> Let me know below if you've been disappointed in love with your orchid bloom. I'm not disappointed. 
Anyway, there we are, Cymbidium 101. As you can see, very strappy and healthy. The only problem I have had with this is that I did have a little attack of scale on the underside of the leaves, which I didn't notice, which is bad of me. So the leaves are a little bit discolored, as you can see, a bit spotty where the scale damage was, but I used a generic oil-based spray on that, and you just make sure you repeat that a couple of times to kind of get the scale and all of its various cycles of growth. And it has been fine ever since. So depending where you've got it and what's going on, I'm sure there are all manner of things that might wanna have a go, particularly perhaps slugs and snails, so bear that in mind. They don't like to sit on the ground, particularly I have read, so hence the Chinese, as you see in Chinese gardens, have them sitting on an upturned terracotta pot, which looks great. Talking of which, terracotta pot, because I am a terracotta pot kind of guy, as we know. It evaporates easily, the water drains fast, the plant doesn't sit in soggy roots generally. The only downside is, of course, it does dry out very quickly in summer, so you must keep your eye on that. Otherwise, I just find them more aesthetically attractive. And cymbidiums are so beautiful that you will want to bring them into the house when they're in bloom so you can enjoy the flowers. And cymbidiums are relatively vigorous growers, putting out quite a few new growths each year. So your pots will get really, really full quite quickly. So you will have to repot it reasonably often, although it does like to be pot bound. You've got to find that happy balance between it being tight in the pot and then not being overly crowded. No, for, oh, actually there's an incredibly faint kind of waxy smell. So again, nothing to write home about, but some Cymbidium hybrids certainly do have amazing fragrance. So they're out there if that's your bag, but generally they are just the most beautiful, quite easy orchids. Mine sits outside, doesn't get any special care particularly. It just doesn't get rained on. But when I go away, I leave them, you know, two, three weeks sometimes. But whenever I do that, I give it a good, dousing before I go and then the first thing I do when I get out of the cab is water all the orchids. Um, they, you know, they're fairly resilient, but their optimum conditions are moderation, moderate temperatures, moderate light, moderate water. There you go. Do tell me any disappointing stories in love with your orchid blooms that you thought, oh, not quite what I expected, never mind. Anyway, but thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I am not an expert, far from it. I am an amateur, but I'm very pleased I've grown this from a seedling to flowering point in three years, and you can kind of see how that happened. So maybe again, encouraging you to try seedlings because they're a much more inexpensive way, and you can get a whole range of hybrid colors with some videos. So maybe just experiment on a few seedlings. It will take you three years, unless your seedling or small plant has two bulbs. Generally, you're gonna need to get a few more bulbs before you get flowers. But thanks for watching. Who knows what we'll talk about next week. I'm sure it'll be something wonderful. But take care wherever you are. And I look forward to seeing you with another orchid next week.